Um, it was a nice week, and I will tell you about it in a moment. Some funny things happened. I missed you guys. I missed you guys a lot. I missed the discipline of this, which is kind of interesting in itself. But anyways, I just got to tell you a couple of funny things that happened. We have uh, something called like the next door neighbor or something like that. And somebody put the, and, and oh, if you're just tuning in right now, we are getting into my studio today. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, so um, this came up <laughs> on that next door neighbor thing. And, um, you know, it said, hey, my friend Nancy told me last week that uh, cats have tested positive. No, they haven't. And I've tried to get my cat to wear this mask, but he doesn't seem to like it. Has anyone had any better luck? And I thought it was hilarious. And then people started saying things like they were believing this. And so I had to put in there something like, yeah, I'm having a heck of a time getting my snake to wear one. I don't have a snake. Uh, and so then I go outside and I come back in and John solved the problem of masking our cat. <laughs> so that's on our front porch right now. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. Let's see. So vacay. Let's talk about vacay. It did not go exactly as planned. Last Sunday, not yesterday, but the starting of it, um, my favorite thing to eat in the morning is uh, scrambled eggs with cheese, with ham, with green onion, and a little bit of sour cream on top. Ooh, so good. And so I made it, and the ham had a weird tint to it, but I thought, well, ham doesn't go bad. And by two in the afternoon, I was in complete misery. I had food poisoning. And fortunately, it wasn't the worst. It was just kind of like when you're in labor and you're going, oh, and then it would go away and then it would come back and then it would go away. So the good news was, was that um, my BFF Karen had just told me about Yellowstone. Oh, let me tell you, this is so good. It is not for the faint of heart. Uh, the very first episode was difficult personally for me to get into because there were so many characters. It is so good. And how you get it, again, it's not for the faint of heart. You get it through um, Xfinity and then a station called Peacock. And it's free, but there's ads. And that's a little disconcerting. But then when I figured out it would cost 100 bucks to watch it without ads, I... No problem with those ads. So I, my uh, my mom's neighbor, Kathleen, is a nurse. And and I told her whatever we were texting. And she said, hey, be, watch out tomorrow too. Yeah, on Monday, I felt like I had been kicked in the gut or beat up. Two, I couldn't get anything done. More Yellowstone. And then about Tuesday, as I, I was okay. So now we're really excited because we're going to go up to the lake. We haven't been up there in like such a long time. We plan to have the kids with us. I went and saw my mom before and I got to actually sit and hold her hand, which was the best. And and she didn't know who I was, but she saw my name and she go, Alex. So anyways, um, so I wanted to see her. Because I knew by being with the kids, I was compromising myself just a little bit. I mean, they are within our bubble, but I really want to take care of my mom and all the other wonderful people in that house. And so um, we pack up the car. We're going to go up Thursday morning. And I look up the air quality and it was like, or what I thought was the air quality. And it was like yellow. Okay. It was up like maybe 30 or something, big deal. So we get up there and we're driving up there and it's getting, it's getting worse and worse and worse. It's getting darker, darker and darker. And I'm sitting there going, it's supposed to be like 40 or whatever. And on the meter. And so I go down to the local fire department and there was one guy there, actually two guys. And I said, do you guys know what the air quality is up here? And they said no, which surprised me because I would have thought a, a fire department would know that. And um, he said, well, I will just tell you that it was a rainbow and we are at purple. Purple is, it is 
the worst you can be. It's like duck and cover and go sit in a closet, okay? So in the meantime, we called the kids and we said, we don't think you should be coming up here, okay? And so we unload everything in the cabin, into the cabin, and then John and I look at each other and we go, this is insane. We, we need to go home. So we packed everything back up and went home. Let me show you a picture of the lake. That's the top on a good day. At the bottom, that's what it was. So while we're driving home, um, we find out that they're closing Yosemite. It's hazardous. That's what it is. Hazardous. That's right, Donna. It's hazardous. So we left and came home. Man, this vacation is just getting better by the minute. Oh, but wait. Yesterday made up for everything. I went to Trader Joe's and uh, they have what I call old fart shopping. And that's when you can go like from eight to nine. And ours is from uh, on Thursday, no, Wednesdays and Sundays. So I'm there, I love old fart shopping because first of all, everything is completely freshly stocked. You get the pick of the litter. And I got my mask on, you know, and um, the lady, you have to be 60. And the gal goes, came up to me, who's like the, the front door lady who washes off your cart and all that. And she goes, how, how old are you? And I go, I'm 65. And she goes, and I'm going, and she goes, oh. And I'm like, whoa, you just made my day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just made my day. Okay. So, yeah. So anyways, um, so at our Trader Joe's, <laughs> they have um, um, Mr. McPinchy, okay? Um, and what it is, is Mr. McPinchy is hidden in various places in the store. And then if you're a little kid and you find it, you get a sucker and you get a sticker. And um, not even for little kids. The first time I found it, I was like, yeah, I found Mr. McPinchy. And they gave me stickers and suckers, so... Yes, I can be weird. So anyways, I'm checking out. I got my mask on and I said, hey, I said, hey, uh, um, is Mr. McPinchy around? And the clerk goes, what? What? And I said, is Mr. McPinchy around? And she goes, was he like a store manager? <laughs> Lobster. I was truly. And she goes, Oh, yeah, I remember that. No, since COVID, no. And I said, Listen, if, if your manager was Mr. McPinchy, surely he would be outed at this point, anyways. So that just made us very, very happy. I mean, it just was great. So Sunday made up for it all. It just got better and better by the minute. So something um, I want to talk about. Am I in the right place here? Yeah. I'm not going to do show and tell today of your works because I have something else I want to show and tell that I know you guys will really enjoy. So I shared on Facebook on, yeah, this happened on Sunday too. I was in, this is a um, calendar by Vicki Rollins, okay? And what Vicki does is she lives in Door County, Wisconsin, and she go, it's so beautiful up there. And she goes on walks and she picks up nature bits, okay? And then what she does is she arranges them and then she takes a picture. Because it's just arranged, she can't sell the work. It's not pinned down. It is art in motion. To me, it's what art really truly is at its very finest. And so here I was on... August. Here's August. Okay. And I'll show you her website and stuff in a minute. And again, this is all found bits on her walk. All right. And then yesterday I thought, oh my gosh, I need to change it. It's September. Wow. I mean, absolutely wow. 
So uh, I put it on my Facebook, and I know some of you don't go on Facebook, and so I wanted to share with you um, this artist's work, and you can get posters of her work, all right? Her name is Vicki Rollins, and again, I'll show you her stuff at the end so you can grab a pencil and write it down. And so she does people, she does nature, Here's Frida. I mean, a lot of us just love Frida. Um, I believe Frida might be in this calendar too. It's 2020. But I look at that and, and she has to, I mean, she can't sneeze, okay? I mean, whatever. But I mean, look at that. Okay, then this is Vicky's. This is over, over, I think, over the fields and I don't know. But look at the little Mr. Wolfie in there. You know, I, 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 I just knew you guys would be okay with me showing you her work because it's so extraordinary. And honestly, it's something we could all try and do. Okay, this one's called Grow Good Thoughts. I mean, she, I just, I can't believe her work. I cannot believe her work. Um, I don't want to plow through these too fast. Silent Night. Uh, she sells these things in, in different sizes to here's Moon Garden. I believe this one is in my uh, calendar. And how I got this calendar is that for Christmas, the kids gave it to me because number one, they loved her art. But number two, she is from Door County, which is not where I was born, but my mom and dad, that's their roots right there. So we all have a very um, strong place in our heart for Door County. So the name of her uh, site is Sister Golden. And you can see that she has all sorts of different things that you can order from her. And then I went and then, and then I went to her Facebook page because I'm trying to get hold of her. I was hoping to, I don't know, just call and tell her I was going to do this today because I so honor her. And I went to her Facebook page and here it is, Vicki Rollins. And then I loved the next line, nothing better than being in your own story studio. So I, I want to say this to um, RBG, may your memory be a blessing to many. I want to say one thing about that and then get into this. When I went to college, uh, I watched the movie on her and she was an amazing, amazing human being, Ruth. And there was a thing on Sunday night that I'm in the middle of right now. But when I went to college, uh, that was in 73, yeah. Um, my my mom and dad had no problems with me going to college at all. Uh, we uh, were a family with two female girls. and But my mom said to me, you're going to college to find yourself a husband. And I'm like going, um, I, and I'm going to ask people, please do not political. Please do not put political things on this. I feel very strongly about it, and this is a political free zone. So I'm just sharing with you right now what happened to me. My mom said, go to college and get yourself a husband. I I laugh about this now. I mean, I did, and now I get it that I have a deeper understanding of Ruth. I didn't realize that in the 70s, I couldn't buy a car. I couldn't buy a house. I couldn't get a credit card. And so that was my mom's sagest advice to me. So I, I just think this is a fact. I'm learning so much government wise. I'm learning so much about who we are as people and all of that through all of this. So, all right, let's get to what uh, Vicki said, which is let's just love our studios, okay? So this is uh, an addition to the back of our house. We uh, back onto a school and actually the daycare where the kids go. And so our area had about an extra 10 feet added onto our lot. I don't understand, I don't get it, whatever, but it was, and my dad at one point after I kept looking for different houses that would have a better suited studio. My dad said, you know, you have the perfect spot to add on. So let's get over to PowerPoint and um, 
let me click up to that point this was my studio kind of pathetic kind of sad but you know what i think the room was 11 by 11 or 11 no maybe it was 12 by 14 i don't quite remember but i had outgrown it now of course i was um a slob and i wasn't organized and i know now after having put together this presentation that it's just a matter of getting organized but i i wanted something bigger and i have to laugh because see the drawer that's pulled out and that whole cupboard thing those were um from home depot like kitchen cupboards and with a door on top and i still have that in my studio today so this was where i worked and what john i just have a picture though of this back building what oh well, you're not onto the next thing i see she on your powerpoint okay john just came john hurry john go look i want to make sure we're all okay because i can't see comments here either huh okay so what do i do here let's try again oh ha, ha. no i'm not okay all right my bad hold on i gotta show my screen okay how do i do that right now TV no i gotta get out of here obviously e i gotta get back in ecamm which is right here oh brother here's john here we get out of here okay there they are up there wait oh okay then you should that. show your screen okay guys i think this is better okay now go to your um powerpoint okay wait a minute okay let's go back to ground zero here how do i get go rid of this PowerPoint. no john i gotta get rid of this image no. yes i do i know this i gotta go here I got to go there. <laughs> okay, so now you have to go now I got to go screen. up here. Thanks, guys. All right. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, so let me go back. There we go. <laughs> John comes running in with panic on his face, as probably you guys were too, going, what's going on here? Hey, here we are. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. Those were from Home Depot, and it just had a door on top. And you can see that um, Libby could come to my life and help me out completely. So this is if I was, now there I was facing my sewing machine. Now I turned right, and that was uh, Adair's closet. I had to take the doors off of it because then I could get three bays of those wire baskets, which I'll talk about later. And then I just, with a spring rod, uh, hung really beautiful fabric as I thought at the time. And then to the right, you can see there's my bookshelf. And then if you completely turned around opposite of the sewing machine was my design wall. And I don't have an image of that. So I even then I understood the um, importance of a design wall. I so outgrew it that I started actually when I was writing my books, I would cut fabric in the laundry room um, with my mat and cutter. And actually the book, my first couple books were written in the laundry room. So now my studio had extended from the extra bedroom to my laundry room and my laundry room's kind of big. So, I mean, if I'm not, it's not like we're, you know, scrunched in a little closet. It's a nice little L shaped room. So what happened was we looked and looked and looked and this is when my dad said, hey, oh, I'm glad I got a picture of this. You've got that whole back area of the yard. And that window is uh, where the window of Adair's bedroom was. And what I did was I went to an architect. I will tell you straight up, I had $60,000 to play with. That was for everything, okay? And so when I went to the architect, it, it um, I think he was about 4,000 and that killed me because that was, you know, that's not 10% of my budget, but it's, you know, getting there. And so um, I kind of was reluctant about the whole thing and I'm ever so grateful I did because that's how we ended up with something that didn't look like a shoe box stuck on the end of the house. So what happened was I had my little wad of money 
And um, John said, because he's a guy and guys are conservative, he said, I don't think we should be doing this. And now I've got the plans, I've got my little wad of money, and I've got the contractor coming in. And I called up the contractor that night and I said, you need to get somebody over here tomorrow with the bobcat and <laughs> start tearing up the backyard. <laughs> then there's no turning back, right? There's no turning back. So uh, really cute was my son was having a hard year that year and he was home from college and he kind of woke up one morning, came and looked out that back window and his comment was, cool. <laughs> So I would say the whole thing took about three months to build, okay? And you can see the truck could come through the back where the school is and bring in the trusses and all that kind of stuff. I was traveling a lot at that point. And so gratefully, my mom and dad came and documented the process. It was, it is right under 500 square feet because the city code said that if you went over 500 square feet, you would have to pay school taxes. I didn't have the money. So it was architected at like 495 square feet. Uh, here now the sidings are going up and I think there's a blue tarp up there because of course it decided to rain. But for instance, if I hadn't gone to the architect, I wouldn't have thought to put in those four windows on top. And I love those windows. They extend my view outside. So on the inside, this is where um, the end of the house was. This was my daughter's bedroom. Oh, I don't know if I've ever told you this story. She, I wasn't gonna give up my studio yet, which was going to become her bedroom. And so I said to her, listen, do you mind sleeping in the hall for a couple months? And the hall is as big as a itty bitty bathroom. But she, and she looked at me and I said, tell you what, I said, I'll buy you a new TV when you get settled in. And she said, okay, well, she did sleep in the hall and I got her a black and white 12 inch and she goes, what? And I said, I told you, or no, I said, now you need to listen to deals. And she all of a sudden understood the, uh, the benefit of contracts and negotiating completely, okay? So there is that. There's the outside looking pretty darn good, okay? Again, this could not have handled, happened without Randy. So this is now walking into my studio office, all right? Where the chair is and the computer, that was her bedroom. So you can see now the cutout that I just showed you on the previous side and how you get through a slide. And so what, what I really was struggling against was, do I want something that's quote unquote off campus or do I want something in the house? Because I had, um, not little kids, but middle-aged kids and preteens and all that, I thought, you know, it's prudent that I stay in the house. And so rather than put a solid door on, um, this was not code, so we didn't put it on till later, I chose to have a glass door put on so that I could see the kids coming and going. And yet I could shut the door and block out the noise of the kids. So in my office, I have um, not really expensive anything. Probably the only thing of super value might be um, the piece of furniture there that was my mom and dad's that I have all of their stuff in right now. Uh, when I, one thing that when I went to look at other studios, I loved what Libby did. I'm not using it appropriately because I'm too messy, but I want you to see this. She had in her office these clipboards that were essentially her filing cabinets. And so if a quilt was out, she would put where it is. Uh, if I'm looking for guests for TQS, I'll put them there. But what has really ended up being there is my go-to information that I need, like my... Um, 
my W9 or whatever that thing is in the upper left-hand corner, you know, stuff like that. If I just need it at a fingertips notice, there it is. If I'm sitting at my desk and I'm looking the other way, I have extended some of my studio stuff into my office. And so it was interesting when I was putting this PowerPoint, when I was reviewing this PowerPoint yesterday for today, I realized that how it was originally set up, my workspace is no longer how it is set up because I have had to adapt it for the changes in my creative journey. So now I'm at the window or the opening and I'm looking straight back, okay? And you can see there that I've got my Q20. Over there, I had my art station. And when I got my Q20, I had to rethink my art station. And so I'm gonna just kind of give you an overview of the space so that when we get into particulars, you'll have a kind of a bearing for it of what I'm showing. If I'm sitting at my sewing machine, I am, and I'm looking left to what was that wall we were just looking at, you can see that I've got my sewing machine there. I still have the original table that my dad built on the left-hand side, and then he built me another one on the right-hand side. And I absolutely adore that I am facing outside, okay? Behind me is my design wall. So there's my Q20. Um, I love, I, I'm not really looking outside and gazing and dreaming when I'm machine quilting. My nose is to the grindstone. But what is so great about this location is that the light is absolutely beautiful. Although I do have an extra light there, you can see. So if I have to pick out stitches or see something a little bit, that I really need to look at, I can flick that light on and it's really out of the way. The Q20 does come with a beautiful underhood lighting system. So the light that it provides alone is really quite wonderful. And the reason I have my straight line ruler there is because I have successfully, and I've shown you, I've learned how to quilt without a walking foot straight line. Also, I wanna mention that that table is completely extended 100%. Or maybe the back flap isn't up, but that's all I need and I'm perfectly happy with it. So now if I go to the left of my sewing machine and I look, you can see where I look back into the office. So we are, I am completely um, in my own little womb, it's one of the happiest places. It's happier than Disneyland, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do when we come back on Wednesday is talk about specific spaces and how I have dealt with them and how I have taken advantage of storage and this and that. Now, how do I, now I gotta get back to the camera. So what type of overhead lighting do I have? I will be talking about that on Wednesday. It's horrible, okay? And, and the thing you have to understand is that when I built this room, and I think it came in with everything, not including the furniture and all that, at about 56,000 or 57,000, I think in the end, I had no money for fancy furniture. And to this day, I've always thought, man, maybe I'll go get fancy furniture. And then I think, why? What I have is completely working. So I mentioned there's a lot of wasted space. I can deal with that and move forward with that. But um, uh, to me, it was getting the space and claiming it to be mine. Okay, John, do we have any questions? Or if you got some questions, you can pop them up. Let me tell you what's gonna happen. When? What direction do my windows face? Thank you. Thank you for asking that. The windows face the morning, okay? The afternoon faces the design wall. Thank you for asking that. It was important to me when we were looking at this space to not have any fabric on storage on this wall that gets the hot, hot heat of the summer in Livermore. So on this wall, the afternoon wall, there's no, there are no windows, there's no anything like that. So, um, John, I'm hoping you can get that. Um, 
you know it's something stupid, right? I, you know, and now they're starting to call us on our phones with stupid stuff. Okay, so let me tell you what's going to happen this week. Um, I think I'm going to have to go buy a lottery ticket. Love it. You know, I am so blessed and and lucky and grateful that I was in the position um, to be able to earn money in a position that I love and save money and do this. So uh, we will talk about lighting a little bit later and because um, it's bad. But anyway, so what's going to happen is, ugh, perfect. Um, on Wednesday, we're going to wrap up studios. On Friday, we're going to start with the basket quilt, okay? But we're not going to start making baskets, and I'll tell you why. I know a lot of you have problems with value, and I'm going to discuss value on Friday because when you're working with a monochromatic quilt, which is what this is, um, value is everything. If you're going to be pulling your own fabric, make sure you have plenty of light, mediums, and darks. If you are going to work with one of these bundles, you might want to pull out some white lights, like these middle ones. I mean, they can have prints and stuff that can be incorporated into this. Uh, you just may want them, okay? The size of the quilt is up to you. I do not care. But beside, besides value, we're also going to be learning how to work with blocks in different sizes. So that's why I'm calling it the puzzle, basket puzzle quilt. The other thing I'm going to, oh, you're going to want this book, the quick and easy block tool. You can get it from us. We also have it as a digital download for even less money. And my friend actually got the digital download and she is going to print it out on cardstock paper, make notes on it, and then make it into a little class binder. So I thought that was pretty um clever okay and then the other thing i'm going to talk about friday we had it as a video i think in sunday's newsletter i'm not sure is i'm going to talk about this um so, so what's it called so steady it is a mat that originally i thought would be really great for like machine quilting because it's a slippy mat like that but it's got all of these little lines here and it can take away the markings that we have to do um, when we're doing, say, half square triangles and stuff like that. Wait, I'm not even on the right thing, am I? Let me get right here. To, let me get to this thing here. I Okay, so there, this is what I'm talking about. Okay. And so the other thing is how it sticks is it's got like not, not anything that's tacky or anything that's going to leave a residue, but it's got this on it. And then you just put it down and it stays. Somebody had mentioned they wondered if it would mark up their um, tabletop. No, it won't. So, and here's the markies I was just talking about. I do have to get back in the gear of things, you guys. I'm going to show you how to use this. Your assignment on Friday, even if you don't have one of these things, is um, to, to get... Let me, oh, boy, I am just... We'll get there, guys. We'll get there. Get there. It's the first day there. First day of school, kids. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about how to get the perfect quarter inch and, you know, how to use this mat, how to get your stuff sorted and all that. And then we'll start in with the baskets on Monday. And my thought is this, is in basket making, there are some things that are just co constants, okay? And then what I'm going to do is um, show you how to do it. Then we'll use Fridays for other things. Like it might be questions and answers. I'm talking to somebody who might easily slide in on Friday to give you time to make baskets, okay? So I am also going to start from scratch. So I apologize for those of you guys that were in the... Um, the mystery class, I've got to start from scratch unless we've got new people. So I'll be talking about threads and blah, 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 and all that stuff. So where does, there was a, a, a how do I get that so I can see better? Um, where does one get the mat? You can get it at uh, thequiltshow.com. And remember, if you spend over $100, it's free shipping. Okay, gotta love technology. You're doing great handling the camera, computing, switching, and talking. Yeah, it's like this, right? <laughs> so uh, how do I find the newsletter? 
what you're going to do is you're going to go to the front page of the quiltshow.com and then go up to the daily blog and scroll down and I believe the video will be there, right John? Will the video be there? The video on how to use this thing? Yes. On the front on the blog. Yes. Yes, okay. Maybe like it might be you have, yeah. might have to scroll down or something like that. But Marion, the other thing too is if you're not getting the TQS newsletter, you are missing the boat, man. We have newsletters that go out four times a week and they're such good stuff. Uh, it's how we communicate with people. Yes, we have the shows and that's all wonderful, but it's how we get information to you. Like for instance, if we're going to have a sale, like if we see something completely awesome, Mary Kay does such a good job. It is, I mean, honestly, I'm just going to toot the horn of the TQS team. It is the best value you can get on the internet. And yes, the value starts with free. And then of course you can become a member. And for six months, it's 1995. It's our COVID deal. And how much is a year? 39, 39, 39 bucks or something. So, I mean, we are it. I mean, we are trying to give you everything we possibly can in our constitution to keep you being the best quilt maker you can be. Okay. Um, hopefully your mat will arrive by then. You ordered it two weeks ago. Pauline, if you ordered it from us, it should be coming. The name of the mat is the So Steady. It is turquoise. Or no, it's a teal blue. It's beautiful. Um, because, oh yes, 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 yes. Okay, thank you, Karen. She had to put the stove steady outside for two days because when she took it out, um, there was like a weird smell, um, like a gassing smell. I don't know what it is, but mine was gone within a half hour. Absolutely gone. So you might want to open it in a more enclosed space. Thank you, Karen, for saying something. Okay. Um, and I save lives. Car Car Carmen, I'm a respiratory therapist. I save lives, but not computer savvy. Hey, Carmen, your job's way more important than mine right now. Do you want us to use one color and its values for this? Or can you use multiple colors? Lynn, you can do whatever you want, okay? I mean, this is a perfect scrap quilt. Just whatever you want, make sure you have lights, mediums and darks and and make sure there's some sort of continuity that pulls them together like a focus fabric or something like that that will make your journey much nicer this is the body of the quilt yes donna this is the body of the quilt um <clears throat> right here uh the name of the show it's the quiltshow.com Here's the quilt. I've not yet put the uh, by, the border on. I know what it is, but John said I'm not allowed to show you yet. My prayer for you is that you don't copy this, that you do your own thing. And I know this from you guys. I know this from what you did this last round. You are an incredibly capable group of people. And we had everything from beginners up to people that I'm like going, geez, I want to take a class with her, okay? Um, okay, Marion, if you're a member and you've never seen the newsletter, go look in your spam, go look in your promotions, okay? Um, I think it, yeah, just go look other places because that can happen and you have to un, un spam us or whatever it is. Oh, thank you, Phyllis, thequiltshow.com. Okay, tried to order it and it was out of stock. Well, guess what? We got more in of the So Steady mats. We've got about 150 we're sitting on. Um, thank you, you guys. So here we go. Oh, Pam, we loved your quilt, your rose quilt. And see, you get to see what other quilters are doing with our newsletter. So with that, I'm going to say goodbye. Um, thank you for coming back. I was afraid I might lose you. And I'll see you Wednesday and we'll wrap up the studio tour thing. Okay? Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.